Hello, good evening indeed, and many thanks for joining us here on Rwanda Television News. We hope you had yourselves a great start of the week. Now, top of our edition tonight, these are headlines. His Excellency Paul Kagame and his family sent a condolence message to the family of late Professor Kalisa Mbanda that he will always be remembered for the work he did for the country. And this was in farewell ceremony of Professor Kalisa Mbanda, who headed the National Electro Electrical Commission, who was laid to rest today on Monday, 23rd, January 2023. The International Monetary Fund appreciates Rwanda for its efforts to combat the effects of climate change in order to build a sustainable and environmentally friendly economy starting this Tuesday. And we are glad to have your company tonight coming to you straight from the heart of Africa, Kigali. My name is Martina Avera. Starting off our bulletin tonight, His Excellency Paul Kagame and his family sent a condolence message to the family of late Professor Kali Sambanda that he will always be remembered for the work he did for the country as this was in farewell ceremony of Professor Kalisa Mbanda who headed the National Electoral Commission who was laid to rest today on a Monday 23rd January 2023. Betty Mutoni has uh, the story. <laughs> The last farewell ceremony for Professor Karisa Mbanda, who headed the National Electoral Commission at the Regina Purchase Church, was led by His Eminence Antoine Cardino Kambanda, who noted that although death is painful, it is not the end of human life because there is life after death. He asked people to reflect on the professor's legacy of love for the people and loyalty because that is love for God. <laughs> In Rwanda and outside, he was a trustfulness and loved people who were supportive to others. He was so helpful to people wherever he could go. He was so social and was loved by all the people. That is what characterized Professor Mbanda. There are many testimonies in the country and outside showing on how people used to enjoy his company. He went through a lot as you heard in his history. He was so humble and so teaching to the young generation. He left us with the heritage of loving and obeying God. That is a secret of loving people and being trustworthy. <laughs> Different people, including friends, leaders in the various sectors, those who live and work with Professor Karisa Mbanda, say that among the things they will always remember about him, there are the values that characterized him, which included love, care, wisdom, humanity, trustfulness, and others. You loved and showed it and told it to us so many times. You and mom raised us well. You taught us good manners, how to be humble, love for work, and respectful to God and to all people. We got so much affection. We got a chance to have a good father and a mother. And I want to thank you all, of you whom we shared a father. We are all here. Let us keep the love and the unity. He would listen to all of us. We would talk and talk, even young kids. He always pushed us to say what is in our minds, because he valued them. His Excellency President Paul Kagame and his family sent his condolences message to the family of late Professor Karisa Mbanda that was led by the Minister of Local Government, Jean-Claude Musabjimana, wishing Mrs. Kambanda and his children to be strong. <laughs> The family of late Professor Mbanda, the President Paul Kagame and his family got to know that Professor Mbanda has died. They felt hurt about that and they are together with late's wife, children and the whole family in this moment. Professor Mbanda served our nation in different sectors. Rwandans will always remember his work. His Excellency Paul Kagame wishes Madame of the late Mbanda and the whole family to keep strong in this moment. May God give Professor Mbanda to rest in peace. <laughs> Mbanda, 
Professor Karisa Mbanda was born in Rundo district on 15 September in 1947 and due to the history of Rwanda, he studied in the countries of Rwanda, DRC and Belgium. He worked in different sectors of this country and he passed away on 13 January 2023 due to the illness. May his soul rest in peace. Betty Mutoni, RTV News. Thank you, Betsy Motoni, for that report. Now, the International Monetary Fund, FMI, appreciates Rwanda for its efforts to combat the effects of climate change in order to build a sustainable and environmentally friendly economy. Starting this Tuesday, it is planned that Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund will visit Rwanda. Jessica Agasero has more on this report. The effect of climate change have had a variety of effects, particularly on agriculture activities. Only people across the country are happy with the way the government has helped them in dealing with these consequences. Looking at those who are keen to come to Rwanda, it's clear that people come because of a safe country, especially in terms of travel, because it has been promoted, like this Rwanda campaign, but also other activities related to the removal of visa for people coming to Rwanda. All this makes people come and do business with us. The International Monetary Fund is helping Rwanda in various ways to help the country build a stable economy and resilience to climate change. It is planned that from this Tuesday, the managing director of the International Monetary Fund, Kristalina Georgieva, will pay a three-day visit to Rwanda. The visit took place shortly after the management of this fund granted Rwanda more than 300 million US dollars due to the political will shown in protecting the environment and dealing with this effect of climate change, which will use climate protection measures to build a stable economy. The International Monetary Fund Mission Chief in Rwanda, Haemanot Tefera, recently said that Rwanda is the first country in Africa to receive money from the Resilience and Sustainability Facility Fund. The IMF Executive Board approved Rwanda's request for support under the IMF's new Resilience and Sustainability Facility, which is the RSF, together with a new policy coordination instrument, the PCI, making Rwanda the first African country to benefit from the new facility. The RSF and the PCI together will support the authorities' efforts to maintain macroeconomic stability, advance structural reforms, including climate adaptation and ensure against downside risks. Under the RSF, which is designed to help low and vulnerable middle income countries build resilience vis-a-vis uh, -vis climate change and pandemic preparedness, Rwanda will receive 315 million US dollars to be dispersed in tranches upon implementation of reform measures agreed under the program and contingent on successful completion of scheduled uh, PCI reviews. RSF supported reforms will help strengthen Rwanda's institutions to deliver and monitor its ambitious climate objectives while also increasing the transparency and accountability of how climate-related funding is used, including those from development partners. Environmental protection expert Dr. Abias Maniragawa finds that the money given to Rwanda will be invested in various programs related to building an eco-friendly economy through financial institutions. Uh, it is very important because Rwanda has uh, largely invested in many activities, many uh, projects that are uh, safeguarding the environment. We can have some examples like restoration of Nyandungu wetland, we have the project like Green Gichumbi, we have these electric uh, vehicles which are being promoted, and so on and so forth. We have many projects that the IMF can come and see how we are now uh, using the money that has been given to Rwanda. An economic expert, Straton Javjarimana, also points out that the visit of this managing director of the International Monetary Fund is of a great value due to the cooperation between this fund and Rwanda, both before and after the COVID pandemic, where its leadership has shown willingness to help Rwanda rebuild its economy. The visit actually is uh, like a, a sign to show that we are supporting you, we are with you, and uh, we are really happy with the progress you are making, uh, um, particularly after uh, this challenging time uh, that has been uh, the, 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 the COVID period. It should actually make our possible to always uh, meet the satisfaction of our partners, including IMF.
The Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund, Kristalina Georgieva, will hold a discussion with officials in various national institutions and it is planned that she will also visit the Nyandungu Eco Park where the ecosystem is protected. Jessica Agasaro, RTV News. Thank you, Jessica Agasaro, for that report. The commissioners of Botswana and Rwanda police agreed to continue the partnership based on the professionalism for effectively tackling on transactional crimes that affect both countries and the region in general. This was said on Monday, the first day of the work visit of the deputy commissioner of the Botswana police and his delegation. Prince Manzi has more. This week-long working visit aims at enhancing the partnership between both institutions. On Monday, the Commissioner General of Police, Dan Munyuza, convened discussions with the Deputy Commissioner of the Botswana Police, Pemero Ramakorwane, and his delegation at the Rwanda National Police Headquarters in Kigali. They also signed different memorandums of understandings in different sectors, including sharing skills through training exchange programs. The Inspector General of Police, C.G. Dan Munyuza, states that these MOUs will also benefit the citizens of both nations that these institutions are in charge of protecting. The Acting Commissioner of the Botswana Police, Pemero Ramakorwane, states that the professionalism of both institutions is remarkable and hence to be preserved. We have shared values. Uh, our values, uh, if we, we, we did not ask anybody, but we are getting um, mm -hmm. feedback from international or institutions or organizations that rate uh, police uh, performance. Uh, police behaviors and characters. Uh, for a long period, Botswana Police Service has been rated number one police service in Africa, with Rwanda coming second uh, and uh, Mauritius uh, coming third. So it is, it is an area that uh, we, we want to, to say that similarity of noting excellence uh, is something that we can carry forward uh, and be proud because it is not only in the Africa uh, continent space. If you go and extend these ratings uh, internationally, uh, we feature very well as high-performing uh, police services in the continent. The spokesperson of the Rwanda National Police, C.P. John Bosco Kavera, states that the signing of these MOUs will further strengthen the collaboration. No, because the police are not Though both police have been collaborating for a while now, there has been a signing of MOUs that will strengthen the abilities of police on both sides. And as you know, the Botswana police was established in 57 years back, and the Rwanda police was established in the past 23 years. Also, partnership in prevention of transnational crimes, including terrorism and cyber crimes, but also partnering as the leadership of both countries agreed. The World Internal Security and Police Index that aims to measure the ability of the security apparatus within a country to respond to internal security challenges both now and in the future, ranked Botswana and Rwanda police as the best and most professional in Africa, an indication that the collaboration between these institutions will be effectively productive. Prince Manzi, TV News. Thank you, Prince Manzi, for that report. Some of the Nyanza district residents request some of the school directors to not expel students as it has led to some untimely dropouts. Prince Manzi continues. In the morning hours, some of the students in the Gwesero High School in Nyanza district are not in classes as they were expelled by the school administration due to not paying the fees. Some of the parents who chose their identities to not be identified do not appreciate the decision of some of the school's administrations of expelling students, as it most likely resulted to dropouts. I have a student here at this school. He didn't come to school today. Due to that, he was chased because of school fees. We found others who were chased, so we request the school to allow negotiations as an option and let the children study. It is only two weeks since the beginning of the second term of the school year. In the southern province, at least 12,000 students are not yet back at school, and almost a half of this number are from Nyanza district. On the other hand, some of the parents are stated to not care about the studying of their children. 
we muri umubyeyi ukabona umwana mu gitondo nimba we If you are a parent and you find a student is not going to school in the morning as usual and you leave him or her at home without knowing if he went to school or not this can influence him or her to drop out the governor of the southern province, Alice Kaitesi, states that by this week, the 12,000 students who are not yet at school will get to school. We had several meetings warning the head teachers to stop chasing students from school because of lack of school fees. As to that, last week we brought back in school almost 48,000 children. This gives us a hope that we will fulfill our goal. As that, we want that by Friday all children should be back at school. As stated by the Southern Province, most of the students who are not yet back at school are from the primary level. Apart from Nyanza district, the Mohanga and Kamanyi district also have a large number of students who are not yet back at school, whereas Hue district has a large number of students who joined schools as soon as the term began. The Catholic Church, in partnership with the non-governmental organization named Rwanda Coping Society, has given the residents of Nyagatere District 90 water tanks in order to help them get access to clean water and help them improve hygiene in their households. Adam Quizera continues. These residents who received these large water tanks are from different parts of Nyagatere District, especially those who are closely with the Catholic Church through its NGO called Rwanda Coping Society, which aims to improve the community's well-being. The shortage of water in Nyagatari district is one of the major issues raised by some residents. As the beneficiaries noted that these tanks will facilitate them to improve their well-being as well. It will help me in collecting water because now children are at school and work and you find that you're home alone without water. But with a tank, I'll be able to do different activities easily. We thank God for these people who gave us tanks. We appreciate it because we used to lack water in summer. Now we will be able to collect rainwater as well as preventing soil erosion. The benefits of these water tanks are pointed by Mushawa Maria Dansi, the coordinator of Rwanda Coping Society, who expressed the reason behind this initiative. We request the beneficiaries to build a complete rainwater harvesting system. In providing this tank, we focus mostly in place with problem of insufficient water, and this region usually have a short rainy season and a very long sunny season. And providing this tank is not done in this region only. We also provide them in other areas, especially to the elders who are not able to fetch water and it helps them in their daily activities. These 90 water tanks are worth of 23.8 million Rwandan francs. As to that, there are other areas expected to also get provided by these water tanks since Rwanda Coping Society has almost 134 branches across the country. Adam Squizera, RTV News. And on behalf of the production team and I, we would like to thank you for sticking with us on RTV News. Have a great night and stay safe.